like pole position, um, some of the arcade games, Centipede, that were they're pretty true to life. But the gaming system itself was not, it was just not, not a good platform. Um, well, I could see that now, but when I was four, it seemed untrue. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up, everybody? By the way, I, I think I guess we're live. Um, I, I, uh, Brad and I are just chatting as everyone kind of trickles in. Uh, we're continuing our, our little conversation about uh, video game. Oh, I guess consoles. we are. Okay, better get it together here. Let's better see. get it together. Um, but no, I. So I would actually in the chat. What was your first video game console? I actually, and I, I don't think that this ages you um, necessarily. Uh, like technically, especially I'm, not today, because you can get retros. And they're actually pretty hip to go back and get a retro gaming system. Isn't it cool? I've seen, I think I've seen the S S N E S as like a, a like taking up a, a stocking stuffer footprint. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this? Yeah. I mean, I bought one a couple of years ago um, and it's like the size of a floppy disk almost, <laughs> you know, basically just big enough to get the controller port plugins. Oh, floppy disk. You mean like the that like save a, icon? A save icon. Yes. <laughs> I have I have used I have used the floppy disk. See, I'm like I'm right at that uh, at least age wise. I'm I'm like right at that sort of turning point where floppy disks were going really out of style oh, okay. and were becoming very limited. But the first computer, I think I set it. My first computer was actually my grandmom's computer, and I set it up. I think I was probably about five or six years old. And I remember it was like that. I don't even. Maybe Brad, you know what which color this is, but that that distinct electronics color. It's like this like weird, like off white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that sort of a beigey white. So, yeah, beige. I somebody, guess. Yeah, I'm sure somebody knows what that's the, called. The closest representation of that. If you have a better word for that, let us know in the chat or in the comments. Even I'll check those too. Uh, to see to see how wrong I am versus the world, yeah. um, but <laughs> I remember it had had a floppy disk area that was like number one. Uh, it had the the eject button. It had the little blinking green light <laughs> that was there. The empty slot, which I love, like the empty slot on the towers uh, that you know you'd come to fill with like a uh, CD a CD ROM drive or a rewritable one too. You could like bring, writable CDs. Yes. That was a game changer. Yeah, it was. Now it's game like game. Uh, it's like everything's downloadable now, though. Even you know your your gaming updates are downloadable. I guess I'm... that's that's kind of wild. Downloadable, yeah. A lot of them are. I mean, so there and, and there there are different levels of it too. Like I don't know if we're asking this question in the chat, but this this was actually a curiosity of mine. Um, you know, DLC downloadable content, right? So there's the DLC. updates to the game. Which sometimes you'll buy a game and then before you can even play it, this is true, before you can even play it, there is a mandatory, sometimes over over a gig update. Um, so imagine you're, imagine you're 12. Uh, okay, so there's, there's <laughs> I just saw the survey, uh, the survey in the chat. Uh, speaking on video games, uh, do you know what DLC means? <laughs> so please answer yes or no. I didn't know that. I mean, I knew you could download the games, but I didn't know there's actually a term for that. So there is, seriously? DLC. Yes, it's it's huh. DLC downloadable content. Okay. Yeah. So uh, downloadable content typically. Uh, so I see Eric Beatty saying uh, his first was Atari twenty six hundred. There you go. Um, then yep. we have Andrew there saying my first video game console was an Atari twenty six hundred clone. But yeah, DLC downloadable content. So picture um, picture a fighting game or a role playing game, right? And it has characters. So DLC, for example, downloadable content doesn't mean you need it or you have to have it, game providers might even sell it as an extra add-on, an extra revenue stream. So you can you know, buy an extra character, buy a new stage, buy a whole other sort of portion of the game even, um, which games like Mortal Kombat have done. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a way for uh, game providers to stay profitable as they continue to update and patch and bug fix the game well after it gets released, which used to never happen. Hmm. Well, that is fascinating. Key and, takeaway from the stream. <laughs> that's uh, that's what we got DLC. Yeah, kind of a cool fact too. And I, I hmm. well, All so right. this is interesting. Hey, I think it's time to go. Uh, so hey, welcome everybody to SolidWorks Live Design. Uh, my name is Brad Williamson. I'm one of the industry process consultants on the 3D Experience Works team. 
And uh, this is going to be awesome today because I get to host one of my teammates and buddies, Sean, who is usually, uh, you know, Sean runs the whole live, uh, live program, all of our programming from live design, SolidWorks Live, Manufacturing Live, uh, so many, so many programs. But Sean is here with um, some really cool things that are coming out in the next few months. Uh, kind of apropos to what we were talking about with the DLCs, I guess, now. Um, some new content, right? Yeah, so, I, I, welcome, I mentioned, Sean. Brad. It, uh, it was, <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat, but it is a bit topical. So uh, I wasn't planning on the video game angle. That was an actual conversation we just kind of came into. But the DLC thing nicely played into it. So I, I appreciate all of your efforts there as, as the host. I couldn't have done it better myself. But yeah, Brad, I appreciate you coming on to host. And this is an interesting episode for me personally, because like you said, typically what I'm doing is I'm hosting live on the Solaris channel or live on the 3D Experience Work channel. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but a lot of that is story led and we're having guests on. It's kind of almost like a SolidWorks or 3D Experience Works talk show, whereas live design in its best form, in my opinion, is actually where you guys, our users or us, you know, uh, tech people at, at SolidWorks, at 3D Experience Works, come on to just show their screens and act as if you were standing right here and I was just showing you some stuff that you found cool or interesting or amplifying for, for your own workflows. So that's kind of what I, I plan on, on doing here. Now, one of the questions I had in the survey, and I don't know if we asked it, we probably didn't, that's okay, was do you would you like Sean to stay in PowerPoint the entire time? Do you want Sean to show only slides the entire time. That's kind of a troll question. I think one of the options I gave was uh, nerd. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, for sure, no or nerd. Um, you know, I would say no, <laughs> like I don't want to. But in, in this introductory portion, as we, des we describe a little bit of what this episode is, I would like to use it as a bit of a storyboarding device for the next three, four minutes or so, if that's okay. Now, Brad, you talked about, you know, this announcement, right? This, this coming soon, the SolidWorks, this thing that GP talked about at 3D Experience World, which was, you know, coming new to many SolidWorks users later on in, in, in the year, uh, July to, to be exact, you're going to get access to all this cool new stuff. Now, in live design, I like to speak in very plain terms. I don't want to talk about things, not that it's bad, but I don't want to talk about things like innovation and changing the entire business landscape. I want to talk to you just plain old like again as if you were standing right behind me looking at my screen about why the heck should you care <laughs> like it's maybe not language i would use in a blog but i'm surely going to use it here and you guys ask questions make comments but let's review some of the stuff that i'm going to go through today and i'm going to go and actually do it we're going to be in solid pr primarily the entire time so first thing what we're talking about is we are giving you almost DLC downloadable content for many SolidWorks users out there beginning in July to where you'll be able to download an add-in and plug and play almost all this stuff I'm gonna show you today. Most principally, what I would say, if I'm just saying the first primary, why should you care? Picture getting external complementary storage for your SolidWorks, okay? Not having to save, if you're, if you're saving a ton of stuff on your full hard drive, my hard drive's constantly full. I have to clear the space constantly. Not having to save to a map network drive, right? Not having to save to maybe a complimentary storage device or storage uh, platform provider that you like to use for your pictures of your family and your videos, um, say like a, a Google Drive. But something made by the CAD company that understands that you probably wanna know a little bit more and understand a little bit more about your CAD data and how to open it and save it a little bit easier and better. Something that's tied to your login and not stored on a laptop hard drive or a workstation hard drive that may crash, may have to be ported over for a full day when you get a new laptop, a new workstation, none of that. It's just tied to your login. So first and foremost, if that sounds interesting, maybe this DLC will be good for you to, to look into downloading and installing and plug and playing and using and leveraging starting in July. So that would be the first thing I would say. And that's, the, that's one of the first things we're gonna look at today inside of SolidWorks. Another part of that, robust open tools. Now that probably means nothing to you, but if you take a step back, we talked about the history of gaming systems just a moment ago, right? It's something a lot of us could, could relate to, or at least like the history of technology over the past 25 or 30 years. And a lot of us 
know that we've been using a file structure, a folder structure in Windows, in Mac, whatever it is, a lot of us Windows as SOLIDWORKS users. And that's kind of how we think. But if you take a step back, when I think about what is that experience like finding things and looking to open things from that structure, um, if I were to imagine a different system, maybe it could be a little bit better. Maybe I could tag things. Uh, maybe I'm not so dependent on knowing exactly the, the hierarchical area uh, where things are stored um, to be able to find them, right? So picture tagging things, like, like, like your browser, your web browser even. What do you do when you want to go back to a website, right? You, you bookmark it. Yeah, you got to flag it. I mean, it's browsing. It's like a browsing mentality versus a searching mentality, I think. Yeah. Now, you know, browsing is great for Netflix. I don't know. Show me something that I might be interested in. Whereas when when you're trying to retrieve a drawing, you know, specifically the one you want. Now you just got to find it. Right. So folders are good. I like them. But there are other ways to do it, too. <laughs> so like this area, kind of like Google driving away, it can it can get you can you can kind of set up a folder structure. But again, there's like you said, show me what I want. Give me more access to modern tools, modern software stuff that will help me find what I need when I need it. I don't need to use buzzwords to say that. It's just that's that's very plainly what you will be able to do if you download this add-in um, at pretty much a plug-and-play level. Um, you can search in that filtering mechanism by your SOLIDWORKS properties, right? We'll, we'll show that. We'll show that today. Uh, just stuff that isn't so dependent on... Uh, a search that is not really working so well, um, that is not built for CAD data, uh, and is not so based on where I store things at a folder level. We don't have to do that anymore. So in plug and play level, that's some of what you're getting, and that's some of uh, some of what we will see. Another thing is overwrite protection. That's a big one. Um, and this is really easy. I like when I'm presenting things that are easy to talk about. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, do I even have to say anything? It, it, could, be, it could be the end. Right. Um, saving over people saving over your stuff, you saving over your own stuff when you don't need stuff. to. <laughs> like, it happens to me most of the time. Yeah. So let's 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 be real. Um, that is that is a problem that actually this can fix what I'm about to show you. Uh, handling versions. Uh, raise your hand. I, I don't care. Even if you're at your cubicle right now, raise your hand uh, if you have ever appended something, and I, I still do this today. I still do this. Underscore V2 at the end of your file names, or making a folder structure to represent a version structure in Windows. I've done that. I'm not proud of it. I'm trying to change. I'm changing more and more by the day as I use this stuff with CAD data. Uh, but that should be a separate thing. And the versions should be aware of each other. It shouldn't be disconnected. Like this part underscore v2, this part underscore v3, and they literally have no idea how they interrelate, even though they do, even though we know they do. Um, that should be different. And this is a plug and way way to make that different. And we touched on it a little bit earlier, but I will get to it at the end in some more depth. I'll go through it, you know, we'll, we'll naturally touch on this, but I'll get through it at the end in more depth. Better search utilities. Um, you can search on basically almost anything. I'll leave it at that for now, right? I'll leave it at that for now. But we're going to go through each of these inside of SOLIDWORKS. And my hope for this episode, and let me know if it's not being achieved in the chat. My hope is that as we show this stuff at a very, very easy to understand level, that come July, when many of you do have access to this DLC, this, this add-in that I've been talking about, the thing that you heard about in large measure at 3D Experience World 2023, that you'll be compelled to at least download it and try it. That's it. That's All my right. So, so five things we want to take a look at today, it looked like. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in the first one because my hard drive is always full and I pretty much only save stuff to one spot and it's my desktop. So what do you have for me? All right, let's do it. So we will see uh, later on before we get to that. We, July is coming. It's April. It's clear, clear as day to me outside. You know, the, you know, the, the, the birds are, are singing and the, the bugs are buzzing around. Um, but we will be back closer to July for more of that story-led piece. We'll show you the share and markup capabilities that you saw. You maybe didn't see on the on the previous slide. We'll show you that in June on live on the SOLIDWORKS channel. Multiple licensing scenarios. You're probably thinking, I have a network license. Um, I have an entrepreneur license. I have a term license. There's so many ways to, to be using SOLIDWORKS. We will go through those in this episode uh, in June. Uh, customer examples and different practical use cases. Also, bookmark. Uh, this website, solaris.com slash itch time, 
Uh, as we lead up to this announcement, we'll continue to update it uh, with more and more details. But Brad, you asked me for something different, which is let's get into the episode. Let's get into SolidWorks. So save, not on my full hard drive, like you mentioned. I am no different in this regard uh, as compared to you and probably many, many others out there. Uh, yeah, my hard drive is constantly full. I'm constantly trying to port stuff over to o- other drives, playing hot potato with my data. Uh, kind of sucks. Um, so if I were to give you three picture, why should I cares as I move into SolidWorks here? Access to additional storage from inside of SolidWorks that is not tied to your laptop, that is not tied to your external storage drive, but is tied to you such that if you sign in on a different installation of SolidWorks on a different computer, your stuff's just there. Just like on our phones, right? We have our Photos app. We get a new phone. Back in 2008, that used to suck. I used to think I have to make sure all of my stuff is backed up so I can port it over to my new device. That's not how it works anymore. It's tied to your login. Um, you know, no need to worry about these the drives, and, and you can also control file access really easily, uh, which we'll, we'll touch on more in, in later sections. But okay, here we are. Let's take a look. So if I look at this, right, this is a drive com assembly made by NCC Automated Systems, a company from Pennsylvania, just like I am. Um, if we look at this, uh, this looks like SolidWorks, right? This looks like SolidWorks, especially if I just hide this in the task pane. Because it is SolidWorks. If you look on the bottom left, there's a SolidWorks Premium 2023. And what I've been talking about is adding in an add-in to help me do some of these things. Now, as far as the save process, what does that look like? Let's go through a quick example of that. Um, so if I look at this drive column assembly, it looks pretty neat. I think as far as like a CAD, CAD data set, um, right, we see a bunch of sprockets here. Now, anyone in the chat want to tell me as we navigate this, and I'll give you a few different views of this, what is wrong here? What seems to be wrong? Does there seem to be, give, give even another clue, does there seem to be something missing here? Let's see. Let's give everyone uh, just a second to uh, to answer it here. And I may may even give you a chance to, to answer as well. You in a way are viewing the episode. Thing. see how about these these pattern the, components the internals is it the that looks the, good looks good looks good so I, I see these these slots where the sprockets go oh there's a slot without a sprocket this is missing there should be one right so uh what i'm going to do right you would think okay if that's the case i'm going to go make a change so there's this pattern here You'll see here's the here's the uh, originating instance, here's the source, and then we have the the children, the pattern instance that are going upward. Um, so all I have to do, double click this. I don't know how many of you knew this. You can actually bring up the dimensions by double clicking, um, and then I can go in, grab that seven, which represents the pattern instance. Double click it. Go ahead. Oh, good. A dimension name. Dimension name sprocket instances, and I'll change that to eight. Rebuild then do a green check uh, to take in my changes there. All right, so there we go. We're, we're in good shape. Now, of course, right, if I want to make a change in SOLIDWORKS, I make it, I'm good, right? Green check, we're, we're all good there. So we're going to start here. I mentioned this is an add-in. It launches with SOLIDWORKS. It's an add-in. It gives you additional capabilities, right? That's what an add-in does. That's what the toolbox add-in does, right? Now, if I look over at this add-in, you might be thinking, Sean, you've been saying a lot about how this functionality is so plug and play, right? And when we talk about saving, you can see over here on the on the right hand side that in addition to giving us the ability to access external complementary storage, this also gives us more detail about the state of our session, right? The session in SolidWorks than we would otherwise get. So that's one plus, right? And you can see, you know, every time we think about adding new software, right, or trying new software, you're always thinking about, at least I am, right? It's how is this change going to affect me and how long is it going to take me to be able to be effective using this at all? Um, well, one thing I really like about this is that it gives you tool tips, right? So we see at the assembly level, right, I had an assembly feature. The assembly feature was the local pattern. I changed the instance count on local pattern. So yeah, it makes sense, right? The assembly itself was modified during this session. Now, there's a lot of other metadata, a lot of other columns that speak plainly, a lot of other columns, a lot of other icons and symbols that we can get into and we will get into. But at the very least, it tells me, okay, the file's been modified during this session, okay? Great. 
So the icons change due to the changes in the session inside of SOLIDWORKS, which I think is, is pretty nice. Now, in terms of saving, right, I still have the ability to save locally. I can do that. Control S, save, it's right up here. Um, but I can also save again to external storage. Now this has already been loaded in, I've saved it in. Uh, now, if I wanna make a save with that change in mind, all I have to do is right click here and you'll see there's another save icon. I can save, resave to my external storage. Now, Brad, I'm not sure, are you using SOLIDWORKS 2023? Yes. Okay, so you might know about this. So if I go ahead and press S, you'll also see that you can add that save icon or add the save capability to your external storage or complementary external storage uh, to the uh, shortcut menu here. So if I search for the commands, let's say I just do save, you'll see it pops up. Now this is nothing new, right? So I, I, can, I can access these commands here, but then I can also add them uh, to the toolbar from there as well. So right, if I do save to uh, 3D experience, that means every time I'm in the assembly environment here and I press S, that key is gonna be right there. Um, so with, within you know, using this tool more and more often as you download this add-in, I certainly recommend uh, looking into to doing that. It's a really easy way to have search literally, or save rather, right next to your cursor. So let's actually see uh, what that looks like. All right, so I've made a change. I'm gonna save it, okay? So it's going to go ahead and it's first going to save the file locally in this sort of cache area. Now, all that means is it's making sure that your file is safe to be able to copy up to your complementary external storage. It's checking in, seeing, you know, within the status window, what, what amount of the file information has changed. And look at that. Um, it's pretty intelligent about knowing what needs to be saved, right? The, the system knows this has, been this has been changed. You probably want to save it, right? So you probably want to save that. And this is what it looks like. Now, another thing I want to notice, I want to notice here, point out, is that in terms of where you're saving it, let's look here. So this aspect here called collaborative space. Now, speaking plainly, the important part here is to, to note that essentially this is your space to store things. That's it. We gave our complimentary storage a name, and I named it Live Design Storage for myself. So all of my live design stuff, all the stuff I'm doing here in this project, think of this as like your drive, your area, like this, you, this is your partition uh, for, for your stuff. And I've also gone ahead and I've tagged it, and we'll take a look at that, uh, as drive column assembly. So bookmarks are like tags, right? You can, you can have, say, a file that is a custom piece of hardware, and it can be tagged under drive column assembly, but then that can also have a tag if you want. You can say custom hardware. You can say it's a piece of custom hardware, and it can have both tags and exist only once. You don't have to make all these crazy copies and have things in all these directories, right? Okay, so what I'll do there is, you know, basically at that point, I've, I've already set that up. I'll just do save. All right, so then it's saving. It's basically taking those changes and uploading. Now, mind you, total elapsed time, you'll see it says one minute, 52 seconds. It's counting the amount of time that I just sat there talking to you guys. Um, but you'll see it's actually saving up there pretty quickly. So it's making the copy, checking the changes, and then essentially putting it uh, into, into storage. Hey, Sean, would this be any different from right now from saving to uh, like a, a commercial cloud storage like a Dropbox or anything like that? Well, there's a couple differences. I mean, it's we, we, could, we could probably talk about that for another 50 minutes. But I, I think one of the one of the biggest differences, or at least the one that pops into my mind, again, if you were sitting here, you asked me that question, um, you know, looking at my screen would be that uh, Dropbox and Google are not necessarily looking or categorizing a lot of these different aspects. Um, it isn't necessarily looking at a lot of like your, your property data, right? It isn't doing that. It isn't necessarily looking to help you track versions. Um, and it also isn't inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, you know, you don't have that add-in right there. Um, so that, there are some key differences already just right out of the, out of the gate. Um, but again, there, there are several others as well. Yeah. And th these are capabilities, by the way, that are in the Maker's Edition today, correct? Yeah. 
some of what you've shown here by the 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 offline storage yeah that that is that is in the maker edition as well so okay. it's 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 a version of solidworks that again it it looks pretty much the same as what you saw on screen but you have the option just like you do here to save to that external storage or you know save to your hard drive if you want okay cool yeah there's a little bit of chatter in the uh, in the chat from some uh, some makers users so that's cool this is going to be relevant to them too yeah, and I, I think that's a key point. Um, you know, as, even as we get into into opening your files, once you've saved them, closed them, how do you actually open them? Because what we saw there was I actually just jumped right into a session. You know, I already had that assembly open for us um, to go through just a very simple uh, save process to show you some of the differences you might see and some of the additional aspects or um, you know artifacts information you might have access to. Uh, but yeah, it, this could be this could be beneficial, I think, to almost anyone that's just working with files in SOLIDWORKS. Okay. Simplest yeah, way really I cool. can say that. So um, so cool. We're able to, you've kind of joined uh, joined us already in progress with the save. Now, now it looks like you're going to backtrack us to how you might start with opening. Yeah, things. opening, right? Opening. And we talked about it in the, in the very beginning, uh, opening from folders and file and, you know, basically having to navigate different folders to, to find your stuff. Uh, that can be a little bit hard, <laughs> a little bit difficult, especially if it was, uh, I don't know, three weeks ago, three months ago that, that you stored something or if someone else stored it, right? You have no prior knowledge of that naturally. Um, what you're able to gain access to, what many SOLIDWORKS users will be able to gain access to beginning in July um, is, again, that downloadable add-in that you could, you know, you don't have to be using the maker version. You could be using your edition of SOLIDWORKS to get this functionality to where we have more of a modern, more design sort of centric way of looking at some of this stuff, right? We're not really just focusing on folder structure. You can tag your files with bookmarks like I did there. Uh, you can search via custom properties, which we'll look at in a second. Um, and you have an instant idea of who owns the file, uh, which I, I don't know about you, but I don't love people asking me whether it's okay for them to edit my files, make changes to them while I'm doing something else. <laughs> Uh, it completely takes me out of the experience. So if nothing else, this is a way to be able to do that um, on, on your end. So let's actually go back to SOLIDWORKS there. Okay, so let's close out of here. So I can press uh, Control W or just X out. All right, so Control W, we'll close. Uh, and then how do I open files? Okay, pretty basic thing that, I, that, we, sh that we should cover. How do I open files from that external storage base. Well, if I press Control O or I go up to uh, the open pane, what you're probably used to uh, is this, right? You're probably used to this. It's SOLIDWORKS open screen. No change. <laughs> now, if you have that add-in, what you also have is this button here, which says open from 3D experience, which you can kind of just think of within the scope of this presentation this sort of over the shoulder look at some of the stuff you can get as open from external storage. Okay, so one is opening from the local PC, one is opening from external storage. That's the same for makers, by the way, right? You, you yeah, that same. yeah, it's the same. And it's a key distinction. What I, my belief is that you're, this isn't going to make it so that you're never working, there's no benefit to ever working or opening, you know, things from your, your hard drive, your C drive. Um, Let's say it's a simple case where you have a file that you're never going to use again. You're never going to use again. You just want to open it, you know, maybe print a drawing um, and that's it. Or you want to open it, make a modification and send it to your 3D printer and you're never going to look at it again. I just really don't see any functional need to put it in, the, in cloud storage or future need storage, have it indexed, have it highly searchable, have it available for other people, take up space. Like, I'm not, this doesn't mean you have to do everything <laughs> like on the complimentary storage area. It doesn't mean that at all. Yeah. Um, now this space I do like because it also takes us out of that folder framework to where the real estate even on this menu is dedicated more towards looking for and finding in an efficient way your CAD data. Like you think about it, the traditional, which SOLIDWORKS has borrowed from for years and continues to do so, the traditional open menu looks to sort of borrow cues from and actually leverage 
the same sort of open dialogue that you might see in almost any other program on your computer. But every other program on your computer is not CAD data. <laughs> like, so it, it, in a way, it kind of almost limits what you can do. So to look over at the side here, right, the home screen, recent documents, that's great. So I can see I can just open up this assembly as well as this part, as well as this drawing. You know, I had these files open pretty recently. Um, but I also have bookmarks. So if I go over to bookmarks here, now I like bookmarks for two reasons. Uh, one reason is that if you were coming into this expecting a folder structure, it kind of looks like that. This almost looks like the navigation pane in Windows, but you don't have to use it that way if you don't want to, right? So I can exit out of the navigation pane. So you can see drive column assembly bookmark, which is where I, or in other words, where I sort of had everything tagged. Um, you can see I have, okay, my assemblies, my drawings. What are some other things that I'm able to see, right? So revision. So I can download something that just like captures versioning history for me if I want it to. Uh, the lock status of something, you know, whether something is able to be changed. Um, you can add additional columns, by the way. This is just out of the box. I have not customized it. I installed it, and here it is. Uh, description, so it can map to your SolidWorks custom, your SolidWorks custom properties like description. A lot of us have a description property for our files. Uh, modification date, creation date, the owner of the file, you know, what, what, which type of file it is, whether it's like a 3D file or a drawing. Uh, and you can also see, for example, who, is, who it's locked by. Right, which is great. You don't have to go sending out like a, a, like if you're in Slack or something, going out there and being like, hey, uh, who has this? Is anyone using this file? Is anyone modifying this file right now? Like, I need to make a change to it. No, it's just there, and you know who has it. So like all this sort of needless communication, you can kind of cut out uh, in a way. Or even if you're using it by yourself, like you said, Brad, it's just you. You can still get value out of it because you are stating an intention through like a right click or a quick click of an, a lock unlock button whether a file should be changed or not. So you have a lot of stuff within even just this open pane. Another thing I wanna highlight, since that's what we're talking about, we're talking about how do you open files and how does that look differently when you, when you use and leverage this sort of external storage is search. So I can filter within this bookmark if I want to. Now, search has, just search in general, has wide ranging capabilities. Um, it literally has its own tab here and in that task pane area, right? But let's say, uh, for example, I search for, I don't know, uh, drive shaft because I have part numbers, right? And those are represented in, let's see, drive shaft. Let's do drive. So I don't actually know if I have that here. So it's searching within the drive column assembly. Let's search drive column. And you'll see it comes up. Now, the file name, of course, is not that. It's 21A-02658, so it's, that's NCC's part numbering scheme, right? But you'll see under description, it's captured that. So I can make this column a little bit bigger, drive column assembly, right? So it finds that for us, uh, which I think is is pretty awesome, right? I didn't, I didn't have to say description equals drive column. I just said, okay, filter within a valuable characteristics that you know about this part or this drawing. Anything that's under this bookmark, which is where I'm sorting, and it just sort of finds it for us, which I think is 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 really interesting, really cool. And you know, even outside of you know thinking about opening from a Windows folder structure, as we compare it to Windows Search, this is just more capable of that because it knows that that's kind of how we want to find things. Well, so, and one other thing about the bookmarks, I think you think you said this too, that the bookmarks are it's not making a copy in that bookmark, right? It's more like a link. So you could have that drive column assembly in multiple bookmarks. You can. Um, think about it like, I don't know, how many of you, let, let us know in the chat, do you, do you guys use bookmark folders in your browser? Because I found this to be a pretty good analogy, um, at least in how, I'm, how I make sense of it in, in my own head. With, with bookmark folders, in your in your browser, you can add the same bookmark in multiple locations. Does that mean you're making a copy of the website? No, <laughs> like you're just you're basically just just giving yourself another mechanism, another area through which to find that website and thereby access it. So you aren't making a copy of anything. You're basically just adding another shortcut or another way to find it easily in a way that makes sense to you, makes sense to your company, whichever, right? Even if, it, even if it's just you, I, th I think it does make things a lot a lot easier, um, a lot simpler. So let's 
sprinkle in some 2023 stuff I also here. Uh, this is, you'll see the mode uh, for opening, and this is something that was mentioned to be yesterday. If you haven't upgraded to 2023 yet, this is, especially if, if you're managing a, a bunch of different users, this could come in handy. You'll see lightweight's hidden. Um, now, lightweight can be a preferred, preferred mode for working within assemblies. Um, you'll see I have an assembly uh, selected here, but lightweight's actually hidden because I have a special option uh, in 2023 under performance that hides the lightweight from the user and has the system, the software itself, do its own job in defining when lightweight should be used. Um, so I just wanted to call that out. It's not that this, this tool does not give you the ability to open assemblies in lightweight. It certainly does. It's just obeying, because it's connected within SOLIDWORKS, it's obeying the option I've set in the SOLIDWORKS, which is, hey, don't ask Sean when it's appropriate to go lightweight to save on performance. Just do it for him. <laughs> So uh, I'll have this in this special resolve state. I'll click open and you'll see that kind of more or less completes the, the open workflow. Now, of course, you know, as I, as I, as we often say in live design, we're talking through a lot of stuff. We're showing a lot of stuff that didn't take long at all, right? If I wasn't talking through all this stuff, we weren't kind of having back and forth dialogue, which is the whole point of the show. Of course, um, that would have taken two seconds and I was easily able to find uh, my file, even if I didn't remember the, the exact name of the, the part or the assembly in this case. So pretty neat. Um, there's another thing I want to show you guys as, as almost a bonus. It, it just sort of popped into my head. In terms of other ways you can open things, because I, I think you'll find, I think you guys out there will find this pretty cool. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is like the number one thing we would show in like a training session or the number one thing you would find in like a webinar about this, but I do find it pretty interesting. Um, so I wanna go back to open and then go back to my bookmarks area. Okay, so my bookmark area pops up. You see it's pretty quick, right? Um, now if I go over, let's say this drawing, you know, I wanted to send this drawing to uh, myself on another computer and I wanted to say like, hey, the drawing's located here really quickly. Send myself quick email, quick text with uh, with the location of it. I don't have to send myself like a full like folder location for it or even a colleague, right? You might want to send, it's like, hey, I'm talking about this file. Don't tell them where it is, just send them a link to it, just like a browser, right? You can select uh, within this open dialog, select a drawing, right, in this case, and you'll see there's a, an icon here that looks like a link and in fact is that to where what it allows you to do is copy a link to that file. So it says link to document copied, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get out of here and can imagine in this case, imagine in this case, we've sent it to ourselves, right? We sent it to ourselves for utilization on a different computer. Maybe we've even saved it as a bookmark in our bookmark folder in our browser. Um, there's a lot of ways you could probably think of to use this. It gives you a link inside of your browser. You don't have to install anything, it just does this. Um, as long as you're logged in, which I am, and it takes me exactly to that file, which I think same is- Same bookmarks, is, same same everything. It's just you're viewing it in a different spot. Is that right? Yes, you are viewing it in a different spot. Like you're, you're in this little bookmark widget kind of pops up and it shows you where that file is. Um, you're probably thinking, does that have to be a list view? No, you could do like a tile view. You could do a thumbnail view. You know, this, this keeps all your thumbnails, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, furthermore, which I think is really cool. If you, uh, let's say I go ahead in my browser and I, I just minimize it so I can see SOLIDWORKS in the, in the background, you can drag this into SOLIDWORKS. And then you'll see So I believe it's probably opening in the, the background here. Drag. There we go. I think I might've let go of my mouse or something. There you go. So it's like almost, and, and the interesting thing here is here, like we know SOLIDWORKS says it's opening a drawing, especially if it's a big drawing, which I would say this drawing maybe is, is, is medium sized with all the components, all the edges and stuff it has to generate. Interesting thing here is, think about it, SOLIDWORKS is locked up trying to open up your files. You can do other things in your browser, right? <laughs> I can go, I can comment on another file, I can view another file while it's operating. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do because this is actually operating out of your browser. So I can have SOLIDWORKS do its thing in the background. And then again, like if I wanted to view this file, you know, I can 
can right click on it, open with 3D play just to view it. I can add comments there. I can add markup data. Um, I can at mention one of my colleagues to, uh, you know, give them an awareness that I've made a markup, I've made a change, or, you know, I've, I've looked at it, it looks good. Whatever you want to say, just stuff you would typically say in any, any environment, right? But I can do that while SOLIDWORKS works. And then I come back and it's loaded, right? So there is, there is sort of that other external benefit to that as well. So if you take a look here, right, to uppermost, uppermost asset is the drawing, and then underneath it are the reference assemblies, so it has a good understanding of that. Some other things in 2023 uh, that you guys might find interesting, so I know a lot of you guys are SOLIDWORKS users. If we take a look down at the Bill Materials, Bill Materials actually got a good facelift here. Um, so if you see here, let's say I just wanted to look at the, the screws uh, within, within this uh, Bill Materials. Can deselect these, go to screw, search, select all. Now I just filter my bill materials to screws. So I can see it that way, which is interesting. Like this is almost uh, Excel level functionality that you're getting inside of SOLIDWORKS with, within the filtering and searching. And then here, for example, let's say um, I'm actually planning on shipping uh, four of these. You can double click and override it, which is not new. Uh, but then I can say, okay, four. And notice it has that new cool. color. Isn't that cool? Give us yeah, a little bit of working on this is great memory. I worked on that uh, last summer on, on that what's new project. So yeah, just doing a little, little bit of an interjection with some some tips and tricks to hold us over <laughs> as, as we as we move about it. But you'll see, you know, I've made some made some changes here. Uh, and then if I go over to my tab, of course, we know I'll get the uh, drawing format out of the way. Does the file have been modified, right? File has been modified. And one thing I can also do, you'll see within the drawing, let's say I wanted to actually make that intentional change. I don't have the file locked, right? I do not have the file locked here. I can do that dynamically. So if I lock the file, you'll see it gives me that little key. So it says, hey, this drawing is locked. Only you can edit it, only you can change it. And it didn't screw up all my changes. It's not like I had to reload it and go back to the original state, you know, without, with me locking it. It just stayed the way it is and just instantly locked the assembly. So, hey, I'm able to save over it now. And also, no one else can. <laughs> like, I think I think that is that is a really neat part of of this uh, this tool. Yeah, my guess is too. If someone else were uh, were working on that same drawing, they would see the lock indicator in their task pane, right? Yeah, it runs it runs in the background as as its own service, um, and it's. It's it's actually pinging the area that is is controlling all this data for you, right? You're not really having to manage any of this. The server is not on premise. It's not something that you're owning, managing. You're not installing this like server service that's running in the background. You have to ask IT to check into. Now it's a lot simpler than that. Um, again, same way with a lot of other cloud storage service providers or services that we use. Think about Google Drive or Dropbox, right? Um, you just start using it. <laughs> it's not like you have to like have a Google Drive server. Um, you know, it's not really. I don't. I don't think that's really a software user's expectation today. Um, it certainly, it certainly is not mine. Um, so, in a lot of these cases, yes, that is that is a useful way to to look at it. I would say. Now, another thing I want to show you again, not really making it so workflow based, but just showing you, I think, some interesting stuff that is complementary to the way that you might look to not only find your files, but find related files. The system also, unlike Google Drive, unlike Dropbox, it actually keeps track of your CAD relationships. So what do I mean by that? You know, I, I found that drawing through a pretty sample workflow. Of course, that was just fine. But let's say I didn't know the name of the drawing or I just wanted to find, I just wanted to go with my intention of saying, Okay, I know there's a related drawing stored in here somewhere. Can I just open it? You can do that too. Um, very so quickly. where used, basically. Where used, right? Where used. Um, but again, not, not on your hard drive. <laughs> like not, not on your C drive. Um, if you right click, you'll see you get like a whole right click menu for anything in this tree. So if I right click on the assembly and I say I want to see its relations, you'll see it kind of transforms us to this space in this same task pane area where it's going to give us kind of almost a SOLIDWORKS treehouse style view 
of your relationships. So Solar Treehouse, I would, I'm curious to see also people here, you know, how many of you have used that? Uh, I think it's a pretty nifty tool. It's a pretty nifty utility that's installed with, with every seed of SolidWorks. But um, essentially, the, the, the reason I draw the comparison is because it gives you sort of a picture-based view of the relationships of, of your assemblies, of your drawings that may reference assemblies, uh, like in this case, right? So you can see, I can look at the children of this assembly. So if I click that, I'll come out with this huge tree of 68 uh, children that the system is aware of. Or I can click drawing. Um, and what that does is it opens up uh, a thumbnail view of the drawing itself. So I can zoom into that. So kind of nice, tells you the revision of the drawing, um, which you can use revisioning here. We haven't even gotten into that, or you can completely ignore it. Um, what I'll do is I'll click on the drawing and then click open. And what that will do is that I'll open up the drawing predictably, right? So it's SOLIDWORKS, as you can see, it's, it's working on that, it's pulling it down. So, all in all, yeah, no more no more nodes on the left side of that either. So is that telling me that's the end of the road? It's the end of the road. Yep. So it, it would it would continue to to sort of as you're mentioning, it would continue to show you different relationships between uh, the displayed objects um, as you as you went there. So just just to pause there, right, and and really now down that point, we are just you're just getting, you're, you're pretty much getting that DLC, that downloadable content that gives you the ability to plug and play as soon as you save it up, right? As soon as you save it up to your, your complimentary storage, it understands these relationships. You know, if these understand, if these relationships are clean on your local drive, like everything is found, you don't have any files missing and you save it up here, it should very well understand those relationships. Um, and again, I don't, it's, it's not something, I, I love services like Dropbox. But Dropbox is not meant for CAD file relationships or like to track those. Not that I've seen, <laughs> like yeah. it's not meant to do that. So like leave it to the company that does that. We make software for you guys, designers and engineers to be able to do that in a way that is intentional. Um, so I hope, uh, hope that's sort of made sense. And um, yeah, that's awesome. It, it looks like too, just from the chat, there's uh, it, it kind of feels like everybody's tracking right along here. So. Um, all right, so you've covered saving, you've covered opening. What else are your big ideas here, Sean? Another big idea. Take a look. What else we got? Override protection. So some of this we we already touched on. Uh, I think some of these in some of these areas, I'll give you some extra extra tips and tricks, as it were, um, just where to find stuff, how to access it. But the three big picture why should I care is we talked about this. People can't save your, your stuff, including you, when you don't intend to, right? You can lock and unlock things. Um, and you don't have to ask people as many questions. We talked about that earlier, but it, 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 it's worth saying it again because I think it's such a big point. Um, I don't, I like, I like talking to people. <laughs> I think a lot of us do. Like a lot of us like talking to people, but there's certain things I don't want to talk about and certain times when I don't want to talk about things. There's certain things I want that I don't want to talk about that seem pretty superfluous, right? Like, uh, hey, who's who owns this file? Can I edit this file? Is that okay? Is it in a state where it should be edited? Is it released? Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who wants to talk about stuff like that. Um, yeah, huge time waster. You can just look at the icon now. And then yes. we can talk about movies and video games and stuff instead. We can do that instead. Yeah. I, so I, I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, now, you know, like there's this task pane we keep talking about. The right click area is pretty nice for that. Like you can, you can very easily lock and unlock things. Get this little key that means like, yes, my green key. No one else can edit this. That's awesome. And they can also see if they look in the same area or look in the open area or look even in the browser, they can see that it's mine. Don't touch it. If you need to touch it, ask me. But now you know to ask me and not the whole, the whole uh, Slack chat, the whole group chat, whatever, the, the whole office. Um, so just annoying stuff. You just kind of get to stop doing. Um, but you can see, right, I can save it. And this is a bit of a toggle, right? I can lock it or unlock it. But if I'm finding I'm doing that a lot, again, this is integrated inside of SOLIDWORKS. So one thing you can turn on, and I'll show you, I'll just zoom in because um, it's easier. And you saw this in the thumbnail, I'm sure, uh, is this lifecycle and collaboration. It's a very fancy name um, for lock and unlock and reload from server and uh, get a different revision. Like, that's what that means. Um, now, this isn't on by default, but those of you who have used SOLIDWORKS for a while know that you can just right click on a tab like I'm doing here, go to tabs, and within the drawing environment, it has stuff that's dedicated to drawings. 
and life cycle and collaboration, um, fancy term, right? Uh, we can turn that on here and get access to the buttons. Now, if you like toolbars, if you like the command manager, that's great. Uh, but remember, within any environment, uh, within parts, assemblies, drawings, even inside of sketching, right? Uh, you get the ability to add the lock and unlock buttons inside of the uh, S key shortcut menu as well. So just like last time, you can do lock and then add that to the toolbar. Uh, unlock, you can search for that, add that all the same, or you can even just click on it and do it. Um, so there's at least three big time areas, mouse gestures. You can even do a macro that does this. <laughs> like, uh, so there's a lot of ways to, to do yeah, that. Feature um, manager even, I think. Feature manager. Yeah, from the little fly out there. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so that, 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 that becomes a little bit of a toggle when you download this add-in, right? So like we're used to anyone that's explored there, and I'm sure there's like ton of, tons of us that maybe you've never even clicked that before, <laughs> but um, you know, we're used to seeing appearance level details, like which color is the component? Uh, is the component transparent? Is the component hidden versus shown? Stuff like that that's, that's pretty nice. Same, same, all the same in drawings with this associated entities like views and sheets and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, you can toggle in between that and also see the same icons that we saw on the left-hand side and hover over those, get those tool tips, uh, really without the need for much, if any, training. Um, if you're using it at, at this, ba this basic level. Now, you could really make this you know, really in-depth, go into detail in changing your engineering, engineering processes, digitizing your whole company. <laughs> like, Yeah, you could build it up to that level if you want at some point. But at this level, like, again, if I'm a single designer, single engineer, uh, this is still pretty useful, I hope. If, it's a, if, you, if you don't think this is useful, please tell me in the chat. But I do think or, that this has been useful. And, and you know what? Don't use it. Or don't use it. <laughs> yeah. That's easy enough. That's, uh, where... that's add-ins, right? But That's add-ins. Yeah. It's really nicely built out. I like the fact that, that um, they thought of S key, they thought of task pane, um, Command manager tabs, feature manager tabs, all the all the same places I would expect any SolidWorks functionality to be built out. It's it's in there, so that's nice. Yes. Right click, you know. When in doubt, right click. When in doubt, right click. Yep, that's cool. why we've been we've been evolving the context menu in this environment for like almost thirty years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good point, Sean. So this is this is. Um, New capabilities that are being rolled out in mass, but the the functionality behind it is is pretty pretty well well thought out, pretty matured. Is that right? It is. The other thing I would say is, you know, I talked about muscle memory in a good and a bad way. You you what you're doing there is you're leveraging tools that you would like to aspirationally use. You can just download. A lot of solver users will be able to download and begin using in a lot a very out of the box capacity, as I'm showing here. But you're leveraging your existing muscle memory to encourage better muscle memory on other things, if that makes sense, better practices and other things. So if you're using the S key a lot already, add those buttons to the S key because it'll be right there and you'll remember them. You'll remember to, to, to gain access to all these benefits through that, that DLC, that downloadable content, that add-in. Um, if mouse gestures are your thing, if keyboard shortcuts are your thing, you can use mouse gestures with these two. You can use keyboard shortcuts with these two. So... Um, and this functionality, and it, taking that question another way, it's not really new. Um, this 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 software has been built out for many, many, many years. Um, we're just kind of making it plainly, plainly, plainly available inside of SolidWorks using very standard SolidWorks operations, like right click and add the shortcut menu. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Like it's that's that's the very basic story of what you can be doing, like right away. So we talked about overwrite protection. It's all about handling versions. I, I, I chuckle, but I cringe every time I think of the things I do in Photoshop and Premiere Pro, things I've done with the XF files, you know, if I'm using draft, a draft site or something else, where you append V2 or A or <laughs> Final, and I've oh, done Final 2. <laughs> um, I'm, sure, I'm sure, Brad, you, you have some of your own, some of your favorites. Yeah, they start to get a little bit more agitated. You know, the more if by the time you're on about the third final, <laughs> <laughs> and they the the, the 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 part that is so funny about it, and I I'm laughing at myself because I do this. I'm not I'm not sitting here as SolidWorks as 3D Experience Works as whatever you know DS and saying 
you've all been doing something wrong. I do this, and it's it's it it it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I again, I I aspire to be better, and we have tools now that uh, you know, starting in July, many Solaris users will be able to use that can make things a lot easier. Virgins should have, let's just say, it very basically, virgins should have their own space. Revisions should have their own space, and it doesn't. It shouldn't be before the dot. For your file extension <laughs> like that shouldn't be it that shouldn't be it um so you don't have to do this anymore and 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 it, there's there's much more to it than this and we'll look at it um but you don't have to do a rev2 at the end of the file name you can also just type in some stuff like a little comment here and there uh that allows you to three days three weeks three months three years from now to understand why you made that new version why you made that new revision um and it doesn't have to be um an email to someone or a sticky note for yourself, or uh, I don't know, I can name you, we can all name sort of in the chat. It, it's, it, it, we all come up with these like really weird ways to do that. Yeah. Um, I, love, then, uh, I love the copy the folder <laughs> to a new folder routine. Oh. So now you have like 50 <laughs> copies of everything. That's great. Cause SolidWorks never gets, never confuses that, right? No, it's really, it's really good at um, letting you design things it's it's we've tried to make it so that it's a bit better um than it than it has been about understanding references but even that's like an art <laughs> um to, to understanding that or at least it's it is a practice i would maybe not i wouldn't say it's an art um i would say it's it's a practice thing to understand file references how they interrelate but you you want to want software to do the software stuff like that's why people get so frustrated with these um and that, that's why i've gotten frustrated with them so how's um, that work? you have a little demo i do uh, unless people ask you questions, no, nope, we're just talking. we're just uh, goofing on on uh, file name suffixes. It's off, it's pretty awesome. Fi so, final final v two. I'm serious this time. Use me <laughs> released. I'm done now. You run you run out of character count. Uh, Dot two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's see here. Yep. So I got this I uh, got this drawing. Um, let's say I open this assembly right from the right from the drawing. So this is showing you some some extra solver stuff that you might might very well already know. Okay. Uh, so let's say, you know, with revisions, I talked about how, you know, you have your own space. And that was probably pretty obvious from earlier in the presentation because you could see there's this rev. What could that mean? It probably means revision or probably means, you know, a, a version, right? And they're all at at version A. Now we know with within this case, like I I added that extra that extra sprocket right at the at the top because that was clearly missing. We couldn't have it having getting sent to production like that. Now it's a very simple and novel change, I understand. But again, just in showing you how easy it is to be able to track this stuff, you'll see I have edit access to it. It's locked by me. Um, I can right click here because my cursor was already there. I could have done a keyboard shortcut. I could have done any number of the other things I mentioned to save. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to, in the background, take inventory of the changes. It's going to save a little copy in the cache locally. So there's there's a safe copy to, to save over or copy over uh, to our complementary storage. Again, stuff you don't really have to think about, but you know, if you're if you're very technically oriented person and you care about this stuff, that's kind of what it's doing in these these individual steps. Um, and then it brings up the the little interface. Now, we already talked about bookmarks. Uh, we talked about uh, finding things, right? We talked about a good bit of information here, but here what we have is new revision, right? New revision. So I can check that if I want to uprev uh, this assembly document. And it's going to say, okay, well, then you have to save it. Great. That makes sense to me. Well, and then and I, can... I see you're, you're only revving the assembly. Um, it looks like it's smart enough to know that nothing else changed. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's smart enough to know that. You know, you can see that within the flag. Um, but, you know, I, if I wanted to, I could uprev everything. But if I just want to do the assembly, I can just do the assembly. Out of the box, it has its own little revision scheme, if you want to call it. But like, let's be real. If you're not tracking things at all, if you're, you're saving things as V2 or Rev A or whatever you wake up doing, um, that's fine. You can customize it to have like a minor or major revision scheme. You can change it. You know, if your company already has pre-existing practices, you're looking to port over. That stuff's pretty easy uh, to do. But if you, you're just using this out of the box, and let's say I wanted to add a comment to, again, three days, three months, three weeks, three years from now, uh, after I move to another company from now. <laughs> like, so you don't that. have to configure it to use it. No, you don't. 
No, you don't. Um, and that's that's a key difference between uh, using a number of other systems, which I hate. I hate using that word because it sounds so daunting. Uh, systems uh, that that you that you may you may look to use for this kind of stuff. So added another instance. So that maybe that's way better than what you're doing now. You can unlock the files after after you you save them. So you know basically you'd be like, hey, I'm done. Someone else can edit these. Um, you know that's that's totally fine. But right now I'll just click save just to show you what that process is like. Of course you know checkbox is a checkbox. I checked it. <laughs> Uh, I'm saving it. It's saving it up. It's adding those changes to the system. Uh, and so, just like you mentioned, Brad, too, if you're if you're using this with another coworker or another few coworkers or ten other coworkers, ten other designers, what they will see as the system is keeping track of this for you in their admin pane. If they open up this file, if they go into their web browser, if they search for stuff, whenever they find this and they look at the revision, uh, what it will show is that the revision has been up. The latest revision will in this case be the next letter right so whatever so can we get a little a little nerdy here eric's got a question the one thing he's not clear about when you're unlocking a model is that doing us a, a, a store is that a retrievable store or does that only happen when you do the revision so let me i'm processing i'm processing the question um so when you When you lock the file, you're saying? Yeah, lock and unlock. That's not that's not the same as like saving a version per se, right? Oh no, no. I, in fact, you you don't really have to be using. Um, I I like whenever I answer questions like these, I like to give like a very extreme example because I, I find sometimes that helps to clarify best. You don't even have to use this revision functionality at all if you don't want to. And you can still lock and unlock things. Yeah. Um, when you save naturally, it's not going to make a new revision unless you tell it to. Okay. So even if I'm not using the revisioning functionality today, maybe I'll decide to in a week, a month. Never. Doesn't matter. Sometimes. Again, sometimes. Yeah. Um, you could still lock and unlock. Uh, and it isn't, yeah, it isn't, it isn't going to kind of naturally do some sort of like, okay, retrieval every time. Okay. Um, or re-retrieval. So it's it's a it's a good question, um, but it, it all also lends itself, I think, to something that maybe wasn't going to be my next point, but I think was definitely going to be something that we had to cover if we were going to do this appropriately. Um, if you right click this, one of the context uh, options or uh, little context menu options is replaced by revision, and replaced by revision, just like a right click menu or just like the file menu in SolidWorks, has another branch of stuff you could do. So let me zoom in here just to show you what this allows you to do. So replace by revision, right? So you can say, okay, in this session, replace by a different revision. So if it's revision D or even going back, revision B, or replace by latest, you could do that as well. So replace by the latest revision in a way of saying, um, I don't really want to, I don't really know which revision this is or what it's called. I just want the latest version of it. Maybe that's not open, right? So um, let me let me just show you this because I think I think this will be this will be helpful to, to understanding as well. So let me do replace by revision. So it's going to show me um, my revision history as it's loading it up from uh, from my storage area. All right, so it says okay, you can load up by revision. B is already loaded. It's grayed out. So yeah, you can't. That's not going to be loaded. That's fine. Now descriptions here, drive column assembly. Um, this is an area where if I go to the gear, um, I could also uh, have it show the revision comment. So it popped up to the uh, to the top there since I checked it. So just to show you, added another instance. I just typed that in. So it it, it does it does keep track of that. There's just one of many areas. There's properties pane you can look at it in for revision comments. So again, you don't have to go asking people questions. It's just there. So if I go ahead and say A, uh, I'll go say you know I clicked A. I want revision A loaded back in at this assembly. Um, it says, okay, reference documents are locally modified. Please confirm that you just want to load in A as it is, as it was saved. I'll say, yes, that's fine. So now it's going to pull that down. Now, the main thing I want to show you, yes, it is good to know that you can just mid-session go and get a different revision, the latest revision, and so on and so forth. But the main thing, as this, you know, this will update in just a moment, the main thing I want to show you is that 
this status area, which, as you mentioned astutely, Brad, is also listed here, also changes. So I'm going to zoom in because this is really tiny. A. But not just A, but we can see this X. And if I hover over here, hover, hover over here on the right-hand side, it says not latest revision. Um, now I can expand this, hide some of these, show some of these. Like, for example, if I'm not showing, if I'm, if I'm not using revisions today, and I don't care. You can uh, customize the view and just turn off revisions. Um, but you can also see is latest or is last revision. It's telling me no, <laughs> like it is not. So it's really nice to have that context uh, there. You know, you can have it here in the in the feature tree fly out all the same, uh, and here as well. So pretty nice. Again, if you want to use revisions, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. If you want to use it sometimes, like you said, that's also fine. Everything's fine. This is meant to be. This is an add-in. It's it's meant to help you, right? It's meant to help you with your work the way that feels not in a way that feels natural to you. Is what I would say. And Sean, I get the idea. There's there's a lot deeper PDM, PLM, whatever term we want to toss in there. There's a lot more that we could go into here. Um, but I think this the there's a little bit of confusion in the chat here of unlock and lock versus saving revisions. Um, to my understanding, lock and unlock is really just about giving yourself the access rights to save something. It's not making a version or revision or whatever terminology we want to toss in there. Exactly, exactly. So let's go back. It is live design. Might as well do this. <laughs> um, I always think it's funny when people ask, like, in, in, in um, you know, if I'm looking at like a webinar or, or you know, anything, and people are like, yeah, please ask questions. Then you don't really, <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't have a course to actually do anything well, different than you plan. And, and you know, that's the thing is, like, there's, and and then, different systems mix their terminology well is it a version or is it a revision or is that... i don't know I'm, yeah I'm just i just want to save it i just want to get it back yeah that's kind so of where we're at i think the scope of where where we're talking about here i just clicked uh i did that quickly let me just do that again this is a toggle okay. so right click lock you know so right now i can see it's unlocked kind of in the background it's right there uh, not locked lock and that's not saving anything. It's just putting a read-only flag on it, basically. Yep, locked by me. No one else can go in here and change it. Okay, I think that that um, that clarifies things. So um, moving to the uh, we're we're a hair past the top of the hour, Sean. What's your what's your last big takeaway for everybody here? You've covered so many good topics. It is the umbrella topic. <laughs> <laughs> which is search, like finding which we things. Already, we already point. got a glimpse of. That's yeah, cool. we've got a lot of that, but I just want to show you guys one more thing. And this is another area, like all these areas, like you said, Brad, you can really go crazy with these. Um, there's a lot you can get into. I My whole focus was, again, if you aren't even working with anyone, just, just try this out if you have access to it. Like, so if I go into, into the search area, um, so I'm in the open pane to get my specialized open pane for designers, for engineers, uh, which is essentially what I'm, I'm, I'm getting access to. Okay, I can search. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. 10,000 items, geez. Well, look at these. So I'm gonna scroll down. So these are special tags that many of them, some of them, I would say, you might look at and be like, I don't know what that means. Some of them, it's like, wait, it just tracks that for me? Like files that are locked. And these can be tra these can be filtered as end or conditions. So I can say, okay, files that are locked by who? By me, by my coworker who just left the company. <laughs> like, like there, there is real utility of this. And you can see, okay, those files are locked. We need to unlock them. Really easy. I don't have to go ask IT, you know, run a special query and 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 find out, you know, what what the status of these things are. You know, revision, country of origin, source. Uh, make or buy, uh, the way that it's manufactured, any property, any property that, that you would want to track and want to filter by in a search way, you can do term searching to within the filtering as well. Um, you can even do by bookmark. Remember we talked about bookmarks? Remember my, my drive column assembly tag? You can tag things that way and it will filter. So let's say I want to do my drive column assembly. Cool. 
Now we're down to 327. We're getting smaller, Brad. This is good. I think I might actually find my stuff. Uh, and then stuff that's in, if you want to do states, you can you can start to employ states like in work, uh, released, frozen. Um, some of those things okay. that's right out of the box. If you want now you're to. really peeling the onion. Okay. Yeah, now you're really peeling the onion. So that's again that's stuff. If I if I'm if I really want to get my engineering processes digitized in this way, sure. Um, locked or unlocked? Let's look for locked stuff in that bookmark folder. Oh yeah, that drawing. That's it. So if that's how I want to filter. If I want to filter by the person who has it locked, that's okay too. Um, creation date. Hey, look, there's me. Persons. Um, so, and you'll see selected tags. So this is basically how I'm filtering within that. They're tagged with that bookmark name and also are locked by someone. In that case, it's me. But search, like you said, peeling about the onion. You can go crazy on this. Um, I could spend an hour talking about all the search capabilities, but just know, big big takeaway, big, big why should I cares? Search for more than just file names. And it works. It actually works. Like I, I stopped using Windows Search a while ago, uh, mostly because uh, you have to search by directory. It takes a long time. A lot of times it doesn't even work if things aren't indexed properly. So I just quit. Index, yeah. Yeah. It takes forever. The slow scrolling uh, Windows Windows bar. And all those tags, by the way, those were those were just system level tags. You didn't have to set all those up. Nope. Yeah. They're just attributes that are built in. So that's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Yeah, and it works. That's the biggest thing. And I think we've um, I think we've tackled the the uh, the big questions in the chat. It looks like um, looks like we're ready to bring it home. Yeah, and remember, um, if if, it, I, if I didn't go over something that you want to see, um, maybe there's another video out there that already covers it. Maybe there isn't. And you're giving Brad and I some ideas on things to create. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like we've got lots of episodes we can plan that that get deeper into some of this this functionality. So that's awesome. Yeah. So as, as I close. Again, a lot of Solaris users will have access to this uh, later on in July. We'll talk about this on a live episode, not live design, but live, where we have, it's like the talk show. We have all the special guests on, you know, actual customers who have used this on here talking about how they've used it, clarifying all the licensing scenarios, all that stuff. But a lot of you will just naturally have access to it uh, beginning in, in July. My biggest hope with this is, again, distilling it down to the simplest of use cases is this something, if I had access to download it, I would download it and begin using it and trying it. I hope I've done that. <laughs> like, yeah. I really, that was my only goal in doing this um, and yeah. and getting your, your questions and feedback was great. Um, but that was my only, only goal in doing this episode, the simplest of, of the simple. So Yeah, I think you really did a good job with that, Sean, because you, you tackled like two of the biggest concerns that we run into every day. I mean, just outside of this this whole PDM PLM discussion that's that's worth having, but at a daily level, I want to be able to save my stuff, know where it is and know how to find it. And and a few other things. That's I have to do that a million times a day. I got to get better at it. And it looks like this will help you. I hope so. I think also even just even just just it's okay to say stuff. <laughs> Like, I just want to save my stuff and I just want to be able to find it. Like that is the simplest way of saying why this makes any sense. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I totally. Okay. So um, what's um, what's coming up? I'm going to pass it back to you because it's kind of your show. So tell us what's next. Well, first of all, thank you so much for hosting, checking in the chat. Um, thank you all for asking, you know, the questions that you asked, especially the lock and unlock thing. You know, discussion. talking about areas where you're confused when, when we're doing a live stream, that is really important because that, that gives us some feedback and allows us to, you know, just revisit things and, and um, you know, just make sure that, that we're all kind of speaking the same language. That's, that's the most important thing. But yeah, so live, Solaris Live, we're going to have an episode right before, the, you know, the changes in, in July that, that GP talked about at 3D Experience World to go through this and more for, like you said, Brad, even, you know, different, maybe more expansive use cases. We'll have cus actual customer examples on as well. Because, you know, we're wondering, yeah, I love software. I talk to a bunch of customers all the time. And I can say that, you know, as someone who's using a lot of software, that stuff made sense to me, what I just showed. It made sense to me as a person. Um, but we're going to see not just that stuff and more expansive capabilities. We're going to talk about the multiple licensing scenarios. We're going to clarify that. Uh, look over customer examples, uh, different practical use cases. 
uh, the share and markup capabilities that are being developed that'll be released later this year um, in a way that is very portable. You know, you, you can you can show your your projects to to anyone. You know, they don't need a special license. They don't even need SOLIDWORKS. They don't need to download e-drawings. They don't need any of that. And they can look at it in on their phone or just a, on a web browser, you know, whatever. Log in and be able to mark up, make comments uh, without having to share the physical file and make copies of stuff. Um, send your IP to everyone. Like that, it's not the goal. It's not the point. Um, so think about how you use that with suppliers and vendors. So that 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 episode will be jam-packed mm-hmm. on the SOLIDWORKS YouTube. In the meantime, SOLIDWORKS.com slash it's time. You can set a reminder for when these changes are afoot. Uh, you can also uh, see some of these capabilities in deeper depth, especially uh, some of those more extensive, like you said, data management, Brad, lifecycle management capabilities to where if you really wanted to start digitizing engineering processes, you can you can start to see a bit of that, uh, even in video form uh, via that website. So SOLIDWORKS.com, really easy website, SOLIDWORKS.com slash it's time. Great and video. Both. Some I think people recognize some familiar faces on that. Uh, I think, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So, so some some Easter eggs in there. But uh, we'll also be back on this upcoming Thursday again on the SolidWorks YouTube channel to talk over changes to community programs. We haven't done a, a, a strictly update on community programs themed episode in I think two and a half years. I think it was Jeremy Regneris uh, was hosting that one. I was running. I just launched the SolidWorks Champions program. Uh, Dan Wagner had just taken over the SolidWorks User Group Network. Um, and you know, we 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 were talking about porting over to gain access to some of this great search technology, the SOLIDWORKS forums, uh, over to our new community space. So, if you're interested in understanding the changes to the SOLIDWORKS community programs, finding your people, getting involved, uh, tune in on the SOLIDWORKS YouTube this upcoming Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And with that, went a little over, but hey, we started off talking about video games. I think we found out some interesting things we could do uh, with uh, you know our, our workflows and just really basic stuff, but very useful stuff. And Brad, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, fun stuff, Sean. All right, thanks everybody. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks guys.